So today I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on functions. And I very frequently see questions on Khan Academy Computer Science Programming section, uh, particularly on Project Fish Tank, or Make a Fish, or I can't remember. I can never remember what these projects are called. <laughs> um, but uh, the project where you write a function that draws uh, some kind of fish, and I uh, they want to know like how do you make the tail size different for every different fish or pass in a, a color. And so what I want to do is I want to go back to something far more basic and just talk about functions from a more esoteric perspective of a magic box. And so a function uh, is something you should think of. You have some way of putting things into the box, and whenever you put something in the box, it's going to spit something out of the box. And so an example uh, that I came up with is if I put 2 into the box that represents the function x squared, then I'm going to get out of 4. If I put in 3, I'm going to get out of 9. And so when you write computer programs, like this calculator, for example, is a computer program, if I put 2 into the function x squared, I get out of 4. And if I put in a 3, now you may be wondering what this has to do with Project Fish, or whatever it's called. And um, it's the exact same concept. I put in uh, perhaps two numbers into my fish function, and instead of getting out some number, the, what I get out is the result over here on the canvas. So here is an example. This is a function that I made. I was just messing around. I think I was helping somebody with the scale function, which raises another point. Your functions in uh, in graphics when you're making art and stuff and doing your Khan Academy projects, um, they usually will have other functions inside of them. <clears throat> and it's the same in math. You don't have to um, have you can have uh, compound functions. So f of x could be x squared plus 2, and all of that divided by 3, some kind of crazy fraction here. And you could think of that as uh, a compound function. Well, what do I do with x? Oh, uh, here I'm squaring it, and then I'm adding something to it, etc. Um, same thing here. I have all of these functions that are defined elsewhere in some other code that you don't even need to know about. You just need to know how these work. And you put in uh, variables and numbers into them, and you get some kind of output, and that is returned to this line of code. And then as the code goes along, things just happen. And then eventually, at the end, you get some kind of output, for example, drawing reflected leaves right next to each other, depending on the x position of the mouse. So I'm going to delete all of that and go back to this. Um, So when you write out your functions, you, you write var function name equals function of properties. And you put out a list of properties in between the two uh, parentheses. Um, and then you put your opening and closing curly braces. And anything you put in between those two curly braces 
is called the code block of the function. So within the code block of the function, I have access to these variables. So for example, if I were to say print ln x, it's going to throw an error because right here, I don't, hold on, I need to clear this other error first. I am using a keyword. I don't have access to a function named x up here until I declare it. Now there is a variable named x. So this line will produce the output 100. See, print line is a function I put in to the print line box. I put in a variable x and I got out the result that I'm seeing it being printed to the screen over here. Well, I can take this and get rid of this. So you might think it's going to throw an error if I put that print line in here. But in fact, there is no error because um, this right here is kind of like saying bar x, except for it's more like saying uh, x is one of the inputs to this box. I'm expecting this and this and this as inputs. And so when I say fish 100, now there is a variable x that has 100, but only within this code block. So x gets printed out. So if I say 200 and red, now all three of those variables are defined within this code block. So uh, I could print them out, but I think I'm going to do something even more interesting and draw a fish. So I'm filling with cull. Cull is the variable that got passed in, which is this kit variable that got declared up here. So if I select a different color, now I have a slightly different shade of red. <clears throat> and um, all of this code just gets reused with whatever inputs you put into it. So if I copy this line of code, so now there's two of them, and then I change some of these variables. Now I have two fish. And <clears throat> this code in here can get very complex and convoluted, and all I have to do is pass in some numbers and I'll get out the result. So functions are very useful. <laughs> um, but you can always uh, reproduce what you did without uh, without the function. So I could replace this line of code with fill and then an ellipse and I already forgot what those numbers were something like this 
I think that's where it was. And so this does the exact same thing as it would do if it was just fish 100, 200 red. <clears throat> but um, you can save yourself a lot of lines of code. Right now, my function is only two lines long. But, and this is essentially two lines worth of code. Those numbers go in propagated into these variables. And this is the same thing as if I'd had the entire code block just replacing the numbers and the variables with what I passed in. So it makes your code condensed and more readable. And you get more stuff done more efficiently. You make less mistakes. Functions are very good. They're your friends. And I am losing my voice, so I got to stop talking. <clears throat>